what data files or transfers are needed for CQM reporting. Your MIPS or Medicare CQM submission will require claims data and clinical data. Specific clinical data being vital signs for the blood pressure, lab results for hemoglobin A1C, depression screening results, which don't necessarily have a standard location, uh, and depression-related orders or services that also don't necessarily have a standard location. So they'll require a little bit of um, decision-making study, uh, 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 perhaps some development. Now, the f going back to those individually, the foundation of accurate reporting is an accurate denominator. We get denominator data from claims. There's no better source from which to understand who the patient is, what problems they have, that is ICD diagnoses, or what services they received, that is E&M codes or CBT procedure codes, and who the insurer is. Now, identifying the insurer is not important for MIPS CQMs, which is all payers, all, all patients, but it is essential for Medicare CQMs. In fact, given us the right date, it's fairly simple to run both of them and, and submit the one that you want. Uh, if you're giving us claims data with an indicator who the, Medi who the Medicare patients are, it's easy for us to switch that, to flick that switch to say, what are the numbers on for the MIP CQMs? What are the numbers for the Medicare CQMs? Now, the great news is we can use your billing records to access these files that are accurate and readable. Most practices have been electronically billing for, for decades, and that data is standard. Um, it's readable, it's understandable, it's, uh, it works because it, it relates to payment. Um, practices may not know where to find them in their systems, but they, uh, or they might, or they can be guided to them by their technology partners or billing revenue cycle partners. Uh, I can tell you if they're sending data electronically to a claims clearinghouse, they have the billing files we need to, to uh, develop these, uh, these denominators. Now, Medicare's offering their claims data for you to build that Medicare denominator. I have one enormous uh, concern about that. I think it's a great guide, and, and if you read their d data um, carefully, you understand that it's it's there to guide you, but the timeliness is a, a, is a big thing. You don't expect to have year-end data from your performance year until February of your submission season. Uh, and that's a little late to pull together a complex uh, submission and get it in by the end of March. So I'm inclined to use, uh, oh, and also that, that, that store of, of data from Medicare cannot be used to do a MIPS CQM submission. It just doesn't have the all payer, all patient data. So if you can get us that ultimately gettable set of data from, from your billing records, we can do both and we can do both very well. Now, so that was my discussion of denominator data, but they're also clinical data. Vitus, vital signs in the labs are usually straightforward extracts from the EHR. Um, and what we ask for is big raw data sets. We want you to do the, le the less filtering you do on your end, the better. I, I haven't seen, at every skill level, I see people, um, excluding important data when they try to apply their own filters to the data. So we get big raw data sets of vital signs, of, of results, and we apply the uh, numerator criteria um, and the denominator criteria to filter out on filter into the patients we need. Um, and that typically works best. Um, now, the two data sets you need for depression can be more challenging. As again, I, I said earlier, they're not as standard. But the depression measure has been around long enough that most EHR users have an infrastructure we can tap to get this data. It may not be used effectively by providers, but both finding it and getting your providers using it appropriately are other chief reasons to engage with your registry early to identify and correct the gaps in that data flow.